Hey everybody, it's Chris the Bad Elf, and today I'm out here by the NGS Monument Q1307. Uh, now, today is going to be all about showing you guys how to actually set up against a known point. So, we're going to cover everything from searching up that known point on the NGS map, and then getting it into your Bad Elf Flex app so that you can find it in the field, and then lastly, actually setting up against the point and testing your accuracy. So, we're going to cut away to what the research process looks like, but after that, we're gonna go ahead and find the monument. So, I hope you guys have fun and learn a lot. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Dave the Bad Elf. When looking for an NGS survey monument to shoot your Bad Elf GPS receiver over, I would recommend Googling NGS map and opening up this nice web app that they have available for the public. If you look on the left over here, you can look at the legend and we can see that combined control is represented by a black square. It says V1, H1 indicating that this is going to be the highest quality survey monument that you can find. Not all are created equal, only some of them are going to be suitable for GPS observations. So if we look at San Marcos right here, the home of the Bad Elf Texas office, we don't see one. So let's zoom out a bit. And if we look at the northeast side of the screen, we can see this black square up here. So let's zoom in on that and we get this pop up with a whole bunch of information about the mark. I'm just going to click on beta passive mark page right here. We already have it open. And when you open up this page, you get information about its known latitude, longitude, as well as orthometric height in meters. We can see that the position datum is in NAD 83 2011 and the vertical datum is NAVD 88. Please keep the datum in mind when comparing coordinates between the Bad Elf and the known coordinates from the NGS website. Just be aware that that your datum is completely dependent on your correction source. So if you're connected to text.for for instance, you will be in NAD 83 2011, and we will be applying the NAVD 88 geoid to those datums coordinates. Back to you, Chris. Hey everybody. Thanks for sticking with us through the research portion. Now we actually have the coordinates to the monument loaded up inside of our Battle Flex app in the saved location. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select that monument, and then I'm gonna use guide to location. And here it's gonna direct me to the monument. So, as you can see, that distance is going down and we're heading in the right direction. So we don't wanna to get too close to the road. We do have our safety vests on, and we're just gonna go ahead and follow our guide to location. So here we're about less than 10 meters away. Guys, protective, personal protective equipment is paramount. I mean, look at all these cactuses. Look at all this traffic. Make sure we bought our jeans, our boots, and our safety vest. We should be good. We just got to be mindful. So. And now if you look here, the known point is actually starting to show up. So that means that we're pretty close. So. And here we are. That's the monument right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my tripod set up and then I'm gonna show you what we do from there. You see why I'm wearing my vest. But anyways, here we are. We're set up against the monument. We're nice and plumb and we're ready to take our measurements. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and connect to my RTK corrections. Now, this does require internet access, so if you are planning on using those RTK corrections in the field, you're going to want to make sure that you have internet access via mobile data or hotspot, just so that you can get them to flow. So, I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the corrections mode, select point one navigation, and then go through the checklist. So, here we see output datum, NAD 83, 2011, that matches up. Very important. So now we're going to go ahead and connect to the corrections themselves. And as you'll see, the base station is only about 15 kilometers away, which is pretty ideal. Typically, you'll see about 10 centimeters of air for every 100 kilometers. So this means that we should be in that one centimeter range. All right, so now corrections are flowing. Awesome. What we're going to do next is navigate to the deviation plot. And what that lets you do is set your plot center with the coordinates of that known point, And then it'll tell you how far off you are in the horizontal. For the vertical, how we're going to check that is on the home screen of our flex, we're actually converting for orthometric height. So 
That means we're going to be applying that geoid offset to our ellipsoidal height and we're going to be reporting it directly on screen. So let's open that up, deviation plot, and yeah, no adjusting. We're already about sub centimeter. Right here, I'm getting about hovering between 0.5 and 0.7 centimeters on the horizontal. Now, for the vertical, the moment of truth, this is the hardest accuracy to nail uh, with any GPS receiver and with just field practices in general. So go ahead and check in right here. And I'm reporting 193.79 meters. So our actual ortho height for this monument is 193.81 meters. So what that means is that we're two centimeters off on the vertical, which is to be expected because typically that vertical accuracy is gonna be one and a half to two times as worse as the horizontal. This is survey grade, this matches up. This is exactly what we wanted to see when we got out here. And I hope that you all learned a lot. So we covered what actually looking for the monument online is gonna be, how to identify a good monument. And then we also covered the different data conversions you might have to do and considerations you're gonna to have to make whenever actually selecting the point and putting in the coordinates. So one last thing to consider. I know that this might've been a little bit hard to digest. Not everybody is a geodesist. Not everybody you know, does this 24 seven or went to school for this, but if they find themselves where they're using geospatial technology and they need a bit of a helping hand, feel free to phone the geospatial enablement team at Bad Elf so that someone like me and my team can go ahead and help you get there. Don't miss the geospatial moment, guys. This has been Chris the Bad Elf. You can all stay mappy.